the undisputed boxing capital of the world. In a few hours, this landscape will transform into a cluster of neon jewels in this desert oasis. Tonight's headliner just happens to be one of the brightest stars in boxing. Welcome to Fight Night from Las Vegas. In our main event, the spotlight shines on the thunder from down under. Undisputed 140-pound champion Kostya Zhu is back in action against IBF number one contender Ben Wondertacky of Ghana. Zhu's first fight since his controversial second-round stoppage of Zap Judah. Tacky's first shot at a world title. And in our co-feature, WBO number four, junior middleweight contender Kovanich Toygenbaev of Uzbekistan. A late replacement will take on former NABF waterweight champion and longtime pro Obakar from the Motor City. The luxurious Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino located here on the Strip, our host venue for this evening's boxing doubleheader. Typical 90-plus degree temperatures this afternoon, settling into the more comfortable 70s here at night. As we make our way inside to the Mandalay Bay Event Center, which has been home to some memorable matchups, including two fights of the year, can it happen again in tonight's edition of Showtime Championship Boxing? As we check out the arrivals earlier of tonight's featured fighters, there he is, Kostya Zhu, king of the junior welterweights, and one of only three undisputed world champs in boxing today. Businesslike, as always, Zhu, the ultimate professional. But don't let the relaxed demeanor fool you. Since losing to Vince Phillips five years ago, Zhu no longer makes the mistake of underestimating his opponent, and be sure he's ready for the challenge of Ben Tacky. And the mandatory challenger, legitimate number one contender, Ben Tacky, nearing the defining moment of his nine-year career. As strong as he is, Tacky probably wishes this were a title fight scheduled for 24 rounds, not 12. Combine his superior stamina with his one-punch power and concrete chin, and the dangerous Tacky might prove to be a threat to Kostya Zhu. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert, ringside from Las Vegas. Substance over style. Perhaps that best describes the triumph of Kostya Zhu, who has refreshingly reminded us that an old-fashioned approach is still a viable route to the top. Last November, Zhu became the first undisputed junior welterweight champion in 33 years when Hawaiian Paul Fuji accomplished the feat. Zhu secured his place among boxing's pound-for-pound -pound leaders with a stunning stoppage of Zab Judah and achieved what most fighters can only dream about. Here are his thoughts on being the unified champion. He is now the unified and undisputed 140-pound champion of the world, Kostya Zhu. Uh, this is page in history. Uh, and I, b I really, really honestly believe that I deserve it. Through the ease in this sport, through the ease of uh, dedication, learning uh, stuff that I, I am deserve to be in this uh, in the memory of the people who will uh, come after us. Well, Kostya Zhu is in some great company with other 140-pound champions like Tony Canzanieri, Barney Ross, Wilfred Benitez, Aaron Pryor, and Julio Cesar Chavez. With that, let me bring on my ringside partner, former world champion Bobby Chez. And Bobby, could you eventually consider Kostya Zhu to be the best ever at 140 pounds? You no, know, eventually, maybe. But with over 100 victories and campaigning as a junior world away for a long time, Julio Cesar Chavez might beg to differ. Kostya Zhu is definitely one of the best 140-pounders to ever grace the ring. But to put him at number one of all time, I think that's just too much to say right now. All right, so it's Zoo versus Tacky later tonight in our main event. As we close in on our opening bout, Kuvanich Toygenbaev substituting for undefeated Hercules Kivelos, who dropped out just 11 days ago for undisclosed reasons, will square off with battle-tested veteran Obakar. And we'll take a look at the three-time world title challenger, Obakar, boxing since 1989, 66-0 fights, four of his five losses versus former or current world champions like Trinidad, Corte, De La Hoya, and Pineda. Impeccable quality of opposition. One of the best never to win a world title. But the many hard fights, the hard training may have finally taken their toll as Carr comes off an embarrassing second-round TKO loss to an unheralded late replacement. Bobby, is it possible Carr got old that night, or can this perennial contender reestablish himself? Steve, nowhere in professional sports is the phrase, he got old in a day more prevalent than in professional boxing. There comes a day in time when the body just cannot do what the mind is telling it to do. Now, only Obakar really knows if he's hit that particular wall, and as far as reestablishing himself, yeah, he can do that simply by beating good proven fighters.
fighters. That's the only way to do it. Hey, some thought Carr was done when he met De La Hoya in 99, but his career was revived in defeat tonight. He has to prove himself all over again. And it's a major opportunity for relatively unknown Kubanich Toygenbaev residing here in Las Vegas by way of Uzbekistan. Hard-hitting, aggressive prospect, 17-1, 12 knockouts, rated number four by the WBO, which may be very generous given his questionable level of competition. Is this unknown commodity on a different level tonight, Bobby, even though a car has possibly slipped? Absolutely. Obakar may be past his be better days, but I will tell you this. He's head and tails above anything that Toygenbaev has ever faced. Carr has fought the division's best from Felix Trinidad and Oscar De La Hoya, Dwight Corte and Yuri Boykampas. His experience alone in those fights and other fights like that may be the difference in winning or losing this fight. And Carr has never lost two in a row. Toygenbaev was on the undercard, but he wasn't training for Obakar. No recognition recognizable names on this guy's ring record. Carr clearly his best opponent ever despite the feeling Carr's best days are behind him. Let's check the numbers as we go to the tail of the tape. Carr listed, listed at 30, but is he actually a late model car? Oba happy about the late opponent change, so he'll be a more comfortable weight. Originally, he was to fight at 147 tonight. It's now 154, and that's a career high for Carr. And let's check the key rules for this non-title affair. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, it's a technical draw. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at the Mandalay Bay Event Center, we are getting ready for Kovanich Toygenbaev versus Obakar, junior middleweight scheduled for 10. Let's get the formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We have a big night of action in store for you, ladies and gentlemen, and it's all brought to you by Vlad Wharton's Millennium Events in association with Showtime. This bout coming your way is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Our judges scoring this bout are all from Las Vegas, Nevada. We have Patricia Jarman Manning, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And the third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, fair but firm, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled in a junior middleweight special attraction. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white lettering, fighting out of his home of Detroit, Michigan. He weighed in at the junior middleweight limit of 154 pounds even. His record stands at 54 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw, 31 wins coming by way of knockout. He is a three-time challenger for the world championship. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Oba, the Motor City Car. his opponent across the ring on my left. He is fighting out of the red corner in this 10-round attraction, wearing black trunks and hailing from Andijan, Uzbekistan. He weighed in at 153 and one half pounds. His record stands at 17 wins, one defeat, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Kuvanich Toygonbayev. Once again, it's Joe Cortez, our referee in charge. Ten rounds of action scheduled. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Give me good sportsmanlike conduct. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. Kuvanich toy gone by a very solid, strong, good right hand, left hook. Calls the right uppercut his most effective punch. Not a one-punch knockout guy, relies more on the accumulative effect. What's left in Carr's tank? We've all seen Obakar on several occasions, a seasoned world-class fighter for many years, but is he on the downside of a long and successful career? Here we go, round one scheduled for a 10. Both wearing the black trunks. 
Judging from Carr's last fight, you got to wonder if he's lost his ability to take a punch. He dismissed that as simply a mistake against a nondescript opponent named Luther Smith, and he says he's approaching tonight like any other fight. Well, you know, Steve, even mistakes when you get hit, you don't fold as quickly in your prime as you do when you get past it. There comes a point in time when the body's just not re responding as well. I've met, I've met those days in the gym, and boy, they're scary. Not a good feeling. In his prime, Carr, an excellent boxer puncher, known for his hand speed and his ring smarts. Nice combinations, good left hook, intelligent technician, always keeper of a good pace. Beautiful counter right hand there by Toygan Baev. Got Carr's attention real fast. Toygan Baev has more of an American style than a European style with a slight movement, not as rigid as some European types. He's trained by a very capable guy named Kenny Adams, who was the assistant coach at the 84 U.S. Olympic team and head coach of the 88 U.S. Olympic team and has some pretty good guys. Freddie Norwood, Vince Phillips, Ray Mercer, Al Cole, Diego Corrales, Frankie Lyles pass through Kenny Adams. You can see that both Carr and Toygan Biver keeping their left hand out there as a range finder, as a sort of swat away the other guy's punches. A little, little, uh, I'd say ineffective right now for Carr because he has no power on his punches. Well, Adams feels that Carr sometimes loops his punches. If that happens, Kuba, as he's called, will go straight down the middle. Bring up, bring up, bring up. Eighth fight of the United States for Toygan Baev. Looked impressive under Zhu Judah here in Vegas. Outclassing a fighter named Fidel Hernandez en route to an eighth round TKO. Stay back, stay back. If Toygan Baev has a, a glaring weakness, it might be his defense. Stop. Stop. Rumor has it that he's in excellent shape, that he has a certain extra physical strength, he's real strong on the inside, and that he does not get tired. So, Carr could have a long night ahead. We'll see if he can uh, deal with Carr's boxing ability and Carr's experience. That's really a big factor. Is he catching Carr at the right time? And Carr is still pretty quick. He's working around the ring with his legs, and he's throwing some punches and immediately holding on to Toygan Baev, which is starting to frustrate the Russian. As we hit the 30-second mark remaining, there's a left hook to the jaw, and Carr was staggered momentarily. But as we've seen in the past, Carr very game. He survived two knockdowns to outpoint Livingstone Bramble, and he was fighting that fight with a hairline jaw fracture, so he's courageous. We saw that also against De La Hoya. There's no question that Carr is a veteran, he's smart, he can fight, and he has heart, but sometimes the days are just over. And that's what we're wondering with regard to Oba Carr. One round of the books, and we are set for Bobby Chez's keys to victory for this fight. Toygan Bayer. First and foremost, close the gap. He's got to get inside. He cannot let Carr run. He can't win from the outside. Also, work the body. That'll slow down Carr's legs as well as his hands. And outwork Carr. Carr is past the prime. This is where he's got to turn it up. For over Carr, he needs to establish his jab. Toygan Bayev is going to come at him. This will keep him at bay. Also, good lateral movement. This will keep Toygan Bayev off balance. And lastly, sharp counter punches. He needs to make the Russian miss and make him pay every time. Watch his left hook by Toygan Baev, right on the jaw. More of a balanced shot, it wasn't really as clean as it looked, but Carr stumbled backward, got his attention, that's for sure. Carr has his dad in the corner, Eddie. Here we go, round two. Have to get that first round to Kuvanich Toygan Baev. Late arriving crowd here. Very excited about the main event coming from the sports book where they were watching the Lakers and the Kings as the NBA playoffs uh, continue. A 6 p.m. start here, Pacific time. It's a little early to get in the fight mode. That's right. Mentioned Carr versus De La Hoya. Carr came off the canvas in the first to last in the 11th round. On that night, he gave Oscar some some trying moments before that fight was stopped. He fought well, and it was one of those performances where stock went up in defeat, which is sometimes very difficult to do. If Carr had one big weakness over time, it's the chin, as Joe Cortez wants to have a word. You got to stop the holding and wrestling. Understand? 
Doesn't want the roughhouse tactics, so he takes charge early. Toginbayev takes a glance over at Cortez. But Carr's had chin problems over the years, down several times, and in so many very hard fights. He doesn't have the one-punch knockout power, neither does Toginbayev. You know, right now, Cobra Carr is not giving me the impression he's trying to set up Toginbayev to win the fighter combinations just to not get hurt, and that's a mistake. Toginbayev, for the most part, pressing the attack. One of the reasons Cortez uh, called time and had a little uh, discussion there, he knows that uh, over time Carr has been guilty of roughhouse tactics, particularly low blows. He had a point deduction round seven against Oscar De La Hoya, you may recall. Wild swing and a miss by the man from Uzbekistan. Right now, most of the warnings from the referee are stop, stop the excessive holding in wrestling. You're just not going to have it. Now, there was a nice combination. Carl went underneath with a double right. left hook right. to the body and head, but holding on. Just hit and hold, hit and hold. That seems to be a strategy. We're trying to establish if Carr can reestablish himself in boxing are his best days behind him and even if he defeats this man in front of him tonight is that a true measure because there's not that much known about Toygan Bayev even though he's rated number four he hit Toygan Bayev card just now with a nice right hand in the temple buck up his knees just a little bit it's a better round for over car hey bring up Carr, as mentioned earlier, listed at 30. Some feel he's older. 54, 5 and 1 with 31 knockouts, 60 fights. He's unrated by the WBC, BA, IBF, and BO. Okay, just keep jabbing. You got to use your jab over time. And you got to be first. You got to keep your thing going and be smart from the outside. You're ducking down, making a miss over the top, but still, you got to touch him with something. You got to watch that excessive mm -hmm. holding. Mm -hmm. Watch, watch mm -hmm. that excessive holding. Yeah. Hey, hey, Ralph. He's it's called clinching. Mm -hmm. It's called clinching. Let him drink a little bit. Let him drink a little bit. Now breathe up, breathe up, breathe up. Mm -hmm. Jab, jab. 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 Keep the jab, jab going. going. And a lot more about the head. Aim to the body, okay? You with me? Come on, lead us up here. Leave it up here. You got the buckets, Dave. Right. Hold Steve. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Oh, man. Talking about it, just shoves the ice pack right out of there. And he's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, he's ready to go, and he does understand English. Kenny Adams doing the talking. Eddie Carr in the corner of Oba Carr. Oba's father. In his last fight, Carr controlled the first round, but uh, in the second he was dropped twice. So he's trying to rebound from that humiliating defeat. Well, Oba Carr's father gave him the right advice. Keep working the jab, use the jab. But when he ducks down and he makes young Russian miss, come up with some touch and some fire back. Make him miss, make him pay one of my keys to victory. The young Russian. Well, the man from Uzbekistan is 26. A lot of amateur experience, 185 and 15, several Russian titles. His only loss, October 2000, a six-round decision to Kasim Oma in Ledger, Connecticut. Another time call. Something wrong with the glove, they have to tape it up. Some dangling tape and Kenny Adams pressed into action. So now we resume round three. Stop, stop. You notice too, Toy can buy his swing from the outside with big hooks, not working behind his jab enough. Something he might want to address, or at least his corner might want to address when he gets back there. Get him out, let him out, let him out, Carver. Tugan Bayev averages around four rounds in his stop, 18 stop, fights. Stop. Go ahead. Carr averages about six and a half. Break! Break out! Break out! Break out clean! Nice body shot. 
Obakar's not really responding. When he blocks some of the shots, he's supposed to fire back. His father keeps telling him he's got to hit him, got to touch him. Touch the Russian on the way in. There he's a nice oh, right oh, hand, oh, the left hook to the body. Hey, into a clinch. And Joe come, Cortez warning Obakar to keep his punches up. That may have been borderline. As mentioned, Carr has had some difficulty in that area before. Good right-left combination. The right upstairs, right, the left of the body by Carr. Now things beginning to heat up that a little bit. Oh, that was very low. Low blow by Carr. Down goes uh, Tregumbayev. And he'll have five minutes to recover. If he doesn't recover, he loses. But it low wasn't point, that severe. He got right One up. One point, low blow. He's uh, deducting point, a point, though. Say that. It's severe enough to over Carr in okay? terms of the points. Do I got to continue? All right, time in. Let's go. Well, he had worn Carr on several occasions, and it got to a point where he took away a point from over. Lobo Carr is going to put himself in a big hole because he's losing the round. Now it's going to be a two-point round, and he can't afford to give away too many rounds. The rush gets stronger as the fight goes on. Over so starting to fade later in his years in this and career. And Bayev really picking up the pace. Just right, when it looked as if a car was coming on, Bobby, the low blow, the point deduction, and now that gave more confidence to Toygan Bayev. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Come on. Final seconds of round three. Toygan Bayev looking to finish strong. Stop! Stop! There we go. There we go. What happened to the jab? What happened to the jab? What happened to the body shot? You're looking for one punch. Adin Duval. Understand? Adin Duval. Hey, Chesty Piat. Adin Duval, Chesty Piat. Very easy. Hop, hop. Watch a clash of heads. Something not strange to the boxing game. There you see. Talking by, just puts his head down. Car sort of runs right into it. And this one was south of the border. Obercar throws a left hook to the body after the right hand up top, right here, and it is low. That is very low. Watch a second time. Again, that low blow, very south of the border. Toygan Bayev goes to his knees. Kenny Adams uh, really in the face of Toygan Bayev, yelling at him. Feeling that Tuck and Bayev's trying to end it with one punch. He wants to see uh, more of an array of punches. And what he said was, come work him behind the jab. You're just looking for one punch knockout. Something I just said, he should work on the corner should address. Kenny Adams all over. Tuck and Bayev off an eighth round TKO over Ron Weaver, April 5th in Phoenix. And already you see Tuck and Bayev landing jab, three jabs already, less than 20 seconds into the round. So he listens well. Round four scheduled for 10, junior middleweights, 154. Originally, Carr was to fight tonight at 147 against undefeated Hercules Cavellos, who pulled out late. The word I heard was that Cavellos was sparring with Costa Zoo, and Zoo busted him up. Well, that would not surprise me somehow. Me too. What does surprise me is why they would put a guy in this close to a fight with Costa Zoo. Even if it is practice. I completely agree with that. Less than two minutes remaining in round four. Costa Zoo will be in the main event against Ben Tacky. Carr just walked into a couple of shots. Came back with a nice combination, too, but you can see a little bit of strain in his face. I think a couple of those shots really bothered him. And he's holding on hard. Yeah, I disagree with Obakar when he says this is just another fight. I'm approaching this like any other fight. I think he really has to win and win impressively here. If he wants to get back in the thick of things, he really does have to make a statement. He's not making that statement right now. And he's missing wildly. And trying to dig to the body with the left hand. Obakar. But Kovanic looks tough. Toygan Bayev just connected with a right hand to the chin. Toygan Bayev trying to make the adjustment to see him jabbing and throwing an uppercut because Oba keeps ducking down. Right handed Toygan Bayev up in front, always over the top. Now he's trying to come up with it, making the adjustments. Toygan Bayev, very aggressive. Wide left hook that went uh, wide over the top. 
Well, that's a smacking left hand by Toygan Baev. Good countering shots. And then Toygan Baev using everything, his shoulders, his elbows. Looked out. You can see the strength factor, too. Obokar is having a real difficult time on the inside. He's being manhandled by Toygan Baev. Car went down, but it wasn't uh, the result of a punch. No knockdown. Carr is uh, having some right. problems here, here with the gangly Toygan Bio. Guys, the second time, no more wrestling, no more holding points to be deducted. Time in. Joe Cortez is getting very frustrated, very aggravated with these two. Uh, stop! As we head for the bell, All that's right. it for round four. Let's go over to Jim Gray. Jim? All right, Steve, thank you very much. Good to be with you. We're joined here in the stands by, of all people, James Carville from the war room of President Clinton, also from CNN and Crossfire, a huge, huge fight fan. In fact, his dad, Chester, was a fighter at LSU and was quite a good fighter, and you fought a little bit yourself, James. How do you see this Tyson Lewis fight coming up? Well, I mean, I'm gonna watch it. I'll tell you what. If I, I would not want to. I would not want Mike Tyson to get beaten. I wasn't watching it on TV. So I mean, I'm. A, you know, I mean, I really. I think. Uh, I think Lewis will beat him. I mean, I, I think Tyson's out of sh out of shape, and I don't think that he. I mean, there was a time. No matter what you think of Mike Tyson, there was a time when he's probably one of the most feared fighters, maybe in the history of boxing. Uh, I don't. Th I don't know if that's the case anymore, and I don't know if Tyson has what it takes to really get into the kind of shape that that you want to be in a fight to fight like this. But I want to watch it, and you're right, there are 5% of the people that watch this because of what A.J. Liebman called it, the sweet science. That's right. There's 95% for the train wreck, and I'll think I'm going to be there for the train wreck. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. <laughs> How do you think that, you, you know, you talk about Lewis, and you say you see Lewis winning this fight. What is it that you see in Lennox being a big fight fan that you are that would allow him to prevail in this? Well, man, basically, I think the most important thing in fighting is, is that you got to be in shape. You got to be ready for the fight, and I think he's got a lot more mental discipline than Tyson does. Uh, I think Tyson, you know, when when he got beat by Buster Douglas, he showed that he did, he didn't have what a real real champion had, like a Rocky Marciano, even a Muhammad Ali, and, and, and guys like that had. They were ready for every fight. You don't you don't get you don't let somebody catch you like that. And I think the guy's gotten old. Oh, as he's gotten older, he's gotten less discipline. All right, James, we appreciate it. Good luck to you on Crossfire. And got a new book out, too. Buck up, suck up. With Paul, with Paul Begala. Let's go back to you, Steve. All right, Jim, thank you very much. James Carville, who should feel very much at home in this environment. Boxing, politics, politics, boxing, pretty much one of the same. A lot of people fighting in both. That's right. Toygan Bayev has come out this round and really stepped up the pace a little bit. Made some very good shots. He overcome a couple of right hands that really shook him. Round five scheduled for ten. Toygan Bayev giving the Obakar some problems throughout. Carl having a point deducted a couple of rounds ago for a low blow. Now, perhaps Carr's best offering, but I think he's starting to get frustrated because nothing really seems to be getting through. And here comes Toygan Bayev. See, Toygan Bayev on the inside is much stronger physically. And right now, I think he's punching him a little bit harder than Obakar. Oh, Carr got nailed. He went down. But they're not calling it a knockdown. They're saying it was a slip, but I think he is wobbling. He ran into a right hand there. You see his legs are still not completely under him. Carr on unsteady legs, and Toy Bayev is trying to jump on him here. And Carr is just trying to hold on. And he continues, Carr, to walk into left hands by Toy Bayev. And now Toygan Bayev with target practice just lining it up. Left-right combination. Again, it's Carr backpedaling. Carr looking to dig. You know, he's stopping, he's planting his feet, he's trying to get off some combination, but there's just not enough on it, too much movement, and always in reverse. And he doesn't see the punches coming. He just keeps walking in to a few of them, and there are others he just doesn't even detect. He said that was the problem in his last fight. He didn't see the right hand coming, and he got nailed.
that steal around by hitting him and moving, hitting him and moving. You got caught that round. Can't huh? let that jab fall asleep. Huh? Can't let it fall asleep. Watch early in the round where Toy Gumbayev starts to land. He's a nice right hand that started to wobble the legs of Obakar. And later in the round, the same thing happened to him. Now you watch him run into a right hand right here, right on the jaw, in the nose area. And he, well, you know, it's good call, not a knockdown, because the rest of it was sort of a pull down. But he was stunned. Definitely stunned. You want to pull the water on his head, mate. Keep jabbing. Use that hand right there. Use that jab. Use that jab and break on your right hands and body shot. Hold time. Hold time. All right, time it. Let's go. Joe Cortez waiting for all of the uh, Wipe that water, the people man. in Carr's corner to uh, exit. We hit round on, six scheduled for ten. Ball. That was a very questionable call, I thought, by Joe Cortez, but it may be academic as Tugan Bayev jumps all over Carr. Tugan Bayev working to the body and the head with hooks. And Carr walked into one there, and he's got a bloody nose to all show right, for it. All right, break, break out, break out, please, break. break. Obakar just a shadow of himself. You know, I was thinking the exact same thing. I could see his mind, Steve, thinking certain moves, but by the time he goes to make them, the move's not there, the body's not working in sync with his head. And, it, and it's a shame because I've been in there, I've done that. It's very different. How much of a difference, Bakar, in preparing for a totally different guy at a totally different weight? Well, you know, style-wise it could be different, but he's had at least uh, a week or two to, to look at some tapes. And not only that, but it's it's not just so much they prepare for somebody else. His reflexes aren't there like they used to be. I, I think he had to rely heavily on his dad, uh, Eddie Carr, because I, I got to tell you, there aren't many tapes of this guy. He's never fought on television. So uh, he's really at a disadvantage. And Carr now trying to spin so I can buy him around and press him up against the ropes, but can't get any punches off. Cortez with his hands full here. Right, See, now there was an interesting break sequence. Overcard, duck came in, duck came in, duck came in, and never threw a punch, just clinched. You know, if he was a couple years ago, maybe he fired two or three shots, steps around and fires some more. He was always known for his nice combinations, his hand speed, but we're not seeing much evidence of that here. Always had great heart, very game, no questioning that. And he's uh, showing a little resiliency here. He's digging in with the left hand. He's just in too close. He has no leverage. He almost stumbled. What he's trying to do, he's trying to smother Toygan Bayev's punches and not get hit. And that's what he's trying to do. He's working his way in for a combination and then trying to smother or tie up Toygan Bayev's arms. But at the same time, unable to step back, obviously, and get some some range. He did there, but he missed. All right, time, 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 time. One point, one point, holding. Taking another point from Overcar, this time for holding. So he's had two point deductions now. In a fight that uh, is not looking good in the first place. He just landed his best combination, did over caught right hand to left hook, then got caught with the same exact punch. Oh, get, get him out of there. Get us out of Stop! 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 So round six is in the books, another very rough round for the veteran Obakar. Well, the countdown continues for one of the most highly anticipated heavyweight title fights in years. As the war of words continues to heat up between Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson, we're only three weeks away from their showdown in Memphis. See these two bitter rivals battle for the heavyweight championship of the world live on June 8th, only on pay-per-view. Don't wait for him. Don't wait for him to punch first. Huh? That's my move. Huh? That's it. Just keep moving your head. Keep moving your head. Give me your head. Give me your head. Here we'll watch Obakar when he's part of the excessive hold, just holding on and holding on. Both right, arms just holding. On. You know, it's one of those things. Technically, holding is illegal in boxing. Excessive holding is going to be a point deduction. No question about it. 
and Joe Cortez did exactly that. Cortez really clamping down at round three. It took a point from Carr for a low blow, and now round six for the hold. And we now into round seven, scheduled for ten. A rough night for Oba Carr. Well, this has to lead the uh, league in timeouts. Get in that corner. Get in that corner. Dr. Margaret Goodman goes over to check Oba Carr. Uh, accidental headbutt. Off an accidental headbutt. Huh? Wipe his eye out. Okay. Get back away. Get, get so away. they get wash away. the eye out Sorry. area there, and he gets oh, back to action in. now. Oh, there it is, over the right eye, and it's in a bad spot because that blood could, could trickle into the eye. It's called an accidental headbutt, but I think it's almost all academic. Right. Break, break out, break out, break out, break out, break out. Each round starting to seem like the round before it. Obergar just not being effective, talking about a pressing issue, right, being get the effective aggressive on, landing, the majority of the clean punches. Carr's really going to have to dig himself out of a hole here. Get him out, get him out, get him out. Minute gone by in round seven. Each round seems to present a new problem for Overcar. Oh, he goes down off a right hand. Are they calling it a knockdown? They're not calling this one a knockdown. Yes, they are. Yeah. Six, seven, eight. The crowd doesn't agree. No, it was a right hand. He may have slipped with it, but there's no question. That right hand hit him in the temple as clean as, that, as clean as it could have been. Yeah, I thought the first one was a knockdown too earlier in the fight. Uh, bring up, bring up, but break, I think break, it's going to be a, a move point up, anyway. With blood coming down the right side of Carr's face. All right, break, break out, let him out, let him out, let him out. Kogan Bayev with some very tough shots. Two good body shots. One of them landed. You could see Carr wince. And that blood gets thicker around the right eye, and Carr is in real deep trouble. All right, all right. Break out, break out, break out. Let him out. Kogan Bayev in complete control. <coughs> She allowed the blood all over to him by his body from Obercar's eye. Obercar could uh, find himself losing two consecutive fights for the first time in his long career. And against relative unknowns, the first one, almost a total unknown, his last fight. And here's Targan Bayev. Now Joe Cortez right, has to start right, looking right, very closely to see if he should continue this fight. Targan Bayev throwing nice combination there, four, five, six unanswered punches. Obokar looking lesser and lesser get him out, get him out, get him as the rounds go by. All right, stop, stop. Let him out, let him out. Three more rounds after this. I got the back. Close your eye, baby. Close your eye. Close your eye. Just keep your eye closed. Keep your eye closed. Give me some, give me some rules. Give me the mouthpiece. You got to keep moving your head, baby. You got to keep moving your head. You got to use your head. You got to box that man. You got to keep your jab in his face and keep boxing him. From just the mouth of the top, trying to get out. Take a look where that cut got open. Obercar coming in. Dwayne Bayer just ducks and Obercar runs into his head. No one's real fault. Just an accidental headbutt. Happens all the time. Now watch that right hand to the ear. Toygan Bayev just comes over the top and hits him in the ear, right glancing off the shoulder, heart balance shot. Not a clean knockdown, but another was a knockdown. A beaten and weathered Oba Carr begins round eight. Carr told us yesterday he doesn't feel old, doesn't think the wear and tear of his uh, long career is a factor. He said he feels young and not beat up. He wants to get in there again with the likes of De La Hoya or Trinidad or fight uh, Vargas, but I think he's dreaming. Well, right now, based on this performance against 
a relative unknown, and, and let's give him some credit to him by his fighting well, but he is not in the class of the aforementioned names. He's just not. Absolutely. He is a, uh, a prospect. He's not very young. He's 26. It's not like one of these, you know, 20-year-old phenoms. And that's uh, probably a product of the uh, the former Soviet system. They fight so many amateur fights. He's got a lot of experience, though, because of that. All right, stop, 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 sit back. Perhaps someday he may be someone to be reckoned with, Toykin Vice. Well, he's showing good durability, showing good uh, workman, like uh, craft. He's, you know, he knows the craft. He knows how to fight. Not a huge puncher, but he throws a lot of punches. But I think it's just, uh, you know, ludicrous that he's rated number four. Uh, 18 pro fights. That's being gracious. And, and there's nobody that we recognize on his ring record, Bobby. This would be the first recognizable name that has established himself. And even given that, his last fight, he was knocked out by an unknown over the card. Obakar, just for your information, has only uh, two knockouts after the sixth round. He certainly needs one here. Back in 94 and the year 2000, he pulled that off. He's going to need uh, something along the miraculous end to do that here tonight. Wild swing and a miss by Carr. And it's got to be frustrating. I mean, he had a terrific career over Carr. He's had a terrific career, but, you know, the reflexes go, the sharpness. And like you said, there where else but it, only in boxing where it can happen overnight. It literally happens in a day, and I can remember very clearly in my mind days in the gym when I thought to myself, oh, my God, I just got old. And, and it just doesn't really go away. That's only as far as boxing up, is concerned up, with you, up, though. Correct. Yes. You're a very young, that, I'm, I'm a young... You're a, you're a young stud, and you're a young broadcaster. There you go. I'm not sure what that makes me, but we'll move on to another subject. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining in round eight. And the blood comes uh, streaking down the right side from the right corner of the uh, Obakar eye. <laughs> You see now, too, even Obokar is loading up. He's telegraphing his punches, hesitating, half starting, half stopping. This is not the Ob vintage Obokar that we're accustomed to seeing. It's very tentative. And a left hook just got in by Toygan Baev. Let's go to Jim Gray, Jim. All right, thank you, Steve. I'm now joined by Al Bernstein, of course, a very familiar face to boxing fans, a longtime expert on ESPN. And Al, first we got Costa Zoo and Ben Tacky. How do you see that one coming up? Very intriguing fight. I have been looking forward to this fight for a long time because Costa Zoo, a very, very exciting fight, as all your viewers know. And the interesting thing is Ben Tacky, I think, is a very intriguing matchup. He's truly, I think, the next best fighter in that weight division. And I think if they say styles make fights, this these two styles should make for a very exciting fight. Costa Zoo won't have to chase him, and so for the viewers, should make for a very good fight. That one coming up next on June 8th, we've got Mike Tyson fighting Lennox Lewis. It's been a long time in coming. How do you see that fight? Well, it's intriguing. You know, there's so much that we say about things that happen outside of the ring. Sometimes you forget to focus on what could happen inside the ring. And the fact of the matter is, anytime you have a big, tall man who punches with power and a short man who punches with power, uh, who likes to get on the inside, you have a great style matchup. And I think a lot is going to depend on uh, what Mike Tyson can do to get himself in the kind of condition, mentally and physically, for this fight, and whether he can get back to some of the uh, skills that we saw from Mike Tyson years ago. If you can do that, it's a very compelling fight. Do you see this as a compelling, great fight, the one we'll look back on for years to come, or did it happen too late in both careers? Well, th there is certainly the fact that it is late in both men's careers, but the one thing we know is that uh, as recently as a few fights ago, Lewis was, uh, and even in his last fight, Lewis really got up for Rockman after losing that fight, and clearly if there's any fight in which Mike Tyson is going to be able to focus and get in as good condition as he can and be as ready as he can, this is the one. So, like with all fights, you hope that both men at the top of their games. Get him, get him, Al, thank you. We look forward to seeing you some more on ESPN. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. Steve, Steve, back to you. All right, Jim. All right. Thank you very right, much. Stop, the stop, affable stop. Al Bernstein. And right now, Lewis is a two-to-one favorite. Tyson has never entered the ring as an underdog. Under two minutes remaining in round nine. Obakar came out this round showing a little bit of uh, desperation, fighting better, probably his best round since the only round that I gave him, which was round number two. 
But Kubanich Toygenbaev, originally from Andijan, Uzbekistan, he's passed through Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, and wound up here in Las Vegas, Nevada, for the most part in command, as you can see right here. Having his way. Halfway through now. All right, stop, stop, stop. One more stop, after stop. this. Let's go, guys. Come on. Cars had a couple of points deducted for fouls, and he's just uh, been losing the fight in any event. He's trying his best here, trying to rally. He needs a knockout to win. Crowd trying to urge him on. Of course, they know the name of Bakar. He's been around for so long, since 1989. He started, he turned pro at 17. And they put him in with a lot of rough guys to begin with. Get him out, guys. You know, each and every one of those fights, you talk about taking something out of your body, but the amount of sparring and training for each fight does even more. For every round you fight, you maybe have sparred 20 or 30, and I can't even begin to tell you the toll it's taken on all the fighters. It's really accumulated on him, you can see. He went 32-0 before his first loss, which was to Felix Trinidad in 1994. He was stopped in the eighth round by Tito for the IBF 147-pound title. Boy, his uh, ring record reads like a who's who. Mike Corte, Oscar De La Hoya, Yuri Boy Compass, Rafael Pineda. On and on and on. Frankie Randall and others. Livingstone Bramble. He's fought them all. He's not ducked anyone. He has literally been a fighter to the Oh, after the bell. That is a blatant foul by Overcar. Okay. Both of you guys. Two punches after the bell by Carr. Both of you guys. Hitting on the a punch. After the bell. Okay, both of you guys. You guys gotta watch it now. You both we both here after the bell. Yeah? Joe Cortez is blaming both, but it clearly looked like Carr was more of a culprit. Go get him over. You gotta go right hand crazy this round, but you can't do it from a distance. This round was a rough one for both fighters. There's a headbutt to the face. You see him holding his glove over his eye, Toygenbaev. There was a little bit of elbow action and shoulder action on the inside. After the fight, after the bell, you'll see the bell rings at the end of the round and they're still swinging. Joe Cortez has Toygenbaev and Carr still hits him two clean shots after he's being held by the referee. Desperation by Carr. All right, here it is, 10th and final round. Carr needs a knockout to win. He needs a dramatic on, KO go, here, go, 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 and he's going to go Touch for it. Let's go. His corner's dad said to go right hand crazy. That was the words of Eddie Carr, and he tries to right, but it was warded off. All right, all right, all right, break, break up, break up, break up. No rough tackles inside, guys. Boy, this has been right, a, break a foul break fest break, break. from the start. Break out. Well, he had to break. And now they grapple. Let him out, let him out. All right, stop, stop. You see, once Obacar gets inside, he can't deal with the strength and the number of punches that Togabayev is throwing, and he just holds. Togabayev just has to stay away to win this fight. I don't think that's part of his mentality. That's what it seems, you're right. Blood all over Tugging by his right ear, but that's from Carr. That's from the right eye of Carr. And Tugging by him going right at Carr. Tugging by him not showing any signs of slowing down or lessening in his punch output, his power. Very good condition. Yeah, he is. All right, stop. Stop. Let's go. We approach the final minute of the tenth and final round, and Tug and Bayab wailing away. Carr looking exhausted, but he is so game. Now right now, it's just a matter of survival. We're trying to get that one lucky shot in, but I don't think over Carr, even if he lands cleanly right now, can hurt Tug and Bayab. I think Carr is just fighting out of instinct right now. Stop, 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 stop. Hitting him from behind, trying anything. 
A right hand by Tagen Bayev, not a solid punch though. Tagen Bayev in tremendous shape. Just keeps coming forward. And he landed a right hand of the jaw to Tagen Bayev. You see the legs buckle a little bit for Opa Carr. A furious attack here by Tagen Bayev and Carr just holding on. The head scraping up against each other. Ten seconds to go. And Carr trying to at least go out valiantly. That's it. This one ends mercifully. And it's got to be Kuvanich Tagen Bayev. A real rough night. Well, this kid looked pretty good, but against a, a an old overcar. Let's go inside the ropes, Bobby. We're gonna watch the head butts. There was one. They just slammed into each other. We'll watch it again. They come inside. The head runs once again. Overcars walking face first up, talking by it, tucking his head down. He's just desperate. And he's not covering. Coming in wide open. A lot of fouling by Obakar, holding, hitting below the belt, hitting after the bell, you name it, he did it. And he was desperate tonight against this young man, Kuvanich Toygenbaev, who uh, just about controlled every round. And I wouldn't be surprised if he wins a shutout. I'm going to say there were one and a half knockdowns in this fight. The first one was not called a knockdown. Well, you watch your open car, his knees buckle, he gets hit. This is the one where he runs into the right hand, his knees buckle a little bit, but there's there's some pulling going on. Okay, see this, this knee's on the ground. That knee's on the ground, that's technically knocked down, but because of the hands up here, you see this, that's pulling him down. You can't really call it a clean knockdown. Later, you'll see the right hand comes over the top. Again, not a real clean knockdown, looks like balance, but it's nothing but the gloves hit Obakar in the shoulder and in the chin, so it has to be called a knockdown. The gloves forced him to the canvas. So Obakar, for the first time in his career, may lose two in a row at the hands of Kuvanich Toygenbaev. You can see the battered eye, the result of headbutts. That's a nasty cut over the right eye in a bad place, clouding his vision. And the ubiquitous Cassius Green, the man of the sailor's cap, Applying the ice and the pressure to that eye is uh, Kuvanich talking by who very rarely changes expression. No doubt the clear winner, and he's on the phone. Well, he certainly didn't need to call 911 tonight. We're ready for the decision. Let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, the judges are in agreement. We have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judges at ringside, Jerry Roth and Dave Moretti both score the bout 99 to 88. Patricia Jarman sees it 100 to 87. All three in favor of the winner, Kuvanich Toygon Balye. A lopsided unanimous decision. The flag of Uzbekistan waving proudly in the crowd. Kuvanich Toygon Bayev. Victorious, so the already talented 154-pound division gets more interesting with the emergence of this new prospect, a late replacement for unbeaten Hercules Cavellis. He beats the battle-hardened veteran Obakar, who loses two in a row for the first time in his long career. Kovacic has his fans, and you really, uh, Bobby, have to wonder about the future of Obakar. Well, it clearly does not look bright, at least, at least for boxing's sake. He's not uh, showing any of the signs of yesteryear. No flashes of brilliance. He's just not there. Meanwhile, the fighter from Uzbekistan, now living here in Las Vegas, goes to 18-1. And, and Carr drops to 54-6-1. And, and the future of Mr. Carr very much up in the air. Let's see how the, the scoring went for Toy Gunbaya versus uh, Carr. Here are the official ringside judges. Wow. And don't remember, don't forget the uh, point deductions for Carr uh, come into play here. Manning had a 100 to 87 toy can buy up. Dave Moretti 99 to 88, and Jerry Roth the same 99 to 88. How I was in the 99-89 air myself. It, it was a one-sided fight, no question about it.
Tim Dahlberg, the Associated Press, pretty much the same. Graham Houston from Boxing Monthly, and Smitty, James Smith, from Smitty's Ringside Seat Radio, saw at 99.88, Toy Gunbaev. So that's the story as far as the press row scoring and the official ringside judges from here at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. Coming up next, it's the undisputed 140-pound championship. Kostya Zhu will take on number one, Ben Tacky. But first, here's what boxing is coming up in the next two weeks here on Showtime. Next Saturday, May 25th at 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, Showbox, the new generation, returns with junior middleweights as Joshim Alcine battles Marcos Primera and Antonio Chelo Diaz faces Rogers M. Tagua in a featherweight special attraction. Then, on June 1st at 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, Showtime Championship Boxing presents the WBU 140-pound championship as Ricky the Hit Manhattan battles Eamon McGee, and that'll be from Manchester, England. Always a treat to visit Manchester and jolly old England, particularly when Ricky Hatton is the headliner. He's a lot of fun. He's a rising star. Coming up next from Las Vegas, the real guy right now.